Hi guys and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to be looking at a new camera on the channel. Now, if you've been watching my previous videos, you'll know recently I made a video talking about the Leica M240 and the fact that I was finally putting it up for sale. Now, what I didn't expect to happen was somebody to reach out and offer a swap. And we have now swapped that camera for the Leica Q. The Leica Q is a camera that I've always been interested in, but it's not a camera that I think I've ever got to the point where I wanted to actually spend the money on it. Now in this video, we're gonna be going through my initial impressions of this camera. What this video is not going to be is a direct comparison to my Fuji X100V. You know that I absolutely love that camera and there's gonna be a separate video where I make direct comparisons all the way through. But this video is gonna predominantly just focus on the Leica Q and not compare it to my other cameras too much. When I first picked this camera up, I was expecting it to be a heavy lump of a camera, and it turns out that that is actually not true. Now this camera weighs 640 grams, and the Leica M240 that I swapped it for body only weighs 680 grams. So the Leica M240, just the body, is heavier than this camera. And I think that's why really I thought that this was going to be a pretty chunky camera and feel extremely heavy but it isn't the case. And to, compared to some of my other cameras, this camera weighs about the same as the X-T4 body only. It's actually slightly lighter than the 16 to 55 mil that I'm recording this on right now. And the only comparison I am gonna make to the X100V is that this camera is about 100, 150 grams heavier, but you are getting full frame. So the X100V is slightly lighter, but this camera is by no means heavy. And that was my biggest surprise picking this up out the box. Beyond the weight, my initial impressions were this is a camera that feels very premium like you'd expect. It feels very well made and all of the buttons and switches click and give you the feedback that you would expect of a camera at this price point. So then what is this camera like to actually use? Now one of my favorite features on this camera is the manual focusing. This is the closest I've got to it kind of feeling natural on a digital camera. Now I think the main reason for that is the focus ring on this camera feels very Leica-like if that's a word. The feedback and throw of the lens is quite short and it's quite stiff in its operation and it feels very nice to use. I also really like how they've implemented the manual focus and auto focus switch. It's like a button on the bottom of the thumb tab that's very easy to engage and disengage as you want it to. Now I've not actually used that manual focus all that much. I have predominantly been using autofocus and on the autofocusing front, I was actually quite surprised how good this camera was considering its age. It's definitely not as quick as the Fuji X-T4, but it's definitely snappy enough for anything that I would ever need. I don't think you're ever gonna find yourself doing things like sports photography and things like that. It's not that sort of camera, but it does everything I would ever want in terms of travel photography and taking portraits. It does have some pretty good autofocus features. It does have things like face detection, which at the time this camera came out must've been pretty new. It's either that or I'm starting to show my age a little bit when it comes to mirrorless technology. Moving around the camera then to the back, the rear screen on this camera is touchscreen. It lets you touch to autofocus, touch to fire the shutter. So it's pretty good on that front. Now I personally seem to have found that the rear screen on this camera is a little bit dark or it, it just shows a lot of reflections. I found in sunny conditions that I sometimes struggle to see the rear screen. What does more than make up for that is the fact that this camera has a really good EVF. Looking through the EVF in this camera, it's very bright and high detailed, and I personally find myself using EVFs quite a lot. Now, I know an awful lot of people just like using the rear screen, but I personally, even on cameras like my X-T4, just find myself putting the camera up to my eye a lot. I think it's probably from shooting a lot of film cameras that I just don't really rely on the rear screen. So for me, the screen being slightly dark on the back wasn't really a deal breaker because that EVF more than makes up for it. So let's move around to the front of the camera then, which is probably the main reason most people even consider this camera in the first place, and that is the lens on the front. Now the focal length for this camera is 28 mil, and I absolutely love that. 28 mil is by far my favorite prime focal length, as I find that having that little bit more width than 35 mil means you can just about shoot whatever you want. You get good portraits, you can get good landscapes. If you're in the city, you can generally still get the big buildings in. So the 28 mil from my perspective, and I know this is personal preference, is perfect. Now the f1.7 is also pretty fast, so this lens gives you a pretty good amount of background separation too. And I find it to be absolutely tack 
sharp, even wide open, which I guess is what you expect when you buy a Leica. Now what is also interesting is the newer Leica Q2 actually has the exact same lens on the front. So it's good to know that the lens on the front of this camera is good enough to have twice the resolution put through it. I think that camera is 48 megapixels and this is 24. Another big surprise for me, because this camera is a Leica, I didn't know they did this, was that this camera has optical stabilization. So the lens is actually stabilized a little bit, which probably means this camera would churn out some pretty good video too, as it would get rid of all of those funny micro jitters that you get when you record video on a camera that doesn't have any stabilization at all. I've not tried that out yet. Maybe I'll give it a go at some point, but I'm not sure this camera for me is ever really going to be doing much video anyway. Now for me, one of the biggest downsides of this camera is the fact that it is not weather sealed. The newer Q2 is weather sealed, but this camera isn't. And I feel like for me personally, especially living here in the UK, this is one of the things that I felt really lets this camera down. I actually had to pack the X100V with me as well, as I knew on a couple days we was expecting rain, and I didn't really want to take this camera out knowing that it wasn't weather sealed. So it's a bit of a shambles really that I took a very expensive camera and still had to take a cheaper one with me in case it rained. But like I said, the Q2 does fix that problem, but it does come at quite a big increase in cost. When it comes to JPEG functionality, I was probably expecting there to be a little bit more, but I have come from like a Fuji background where the JPEG settings are almost endless. I find the JPEGs themselves to be okay. I find that that lack of customization though means that I would end up probably not using JPEGs very often. I would probably view this camera as more of a raw shooter than a JPEG shooter. So I think whenever I take this camera out, my view is that I'm gonna get home and edit the images rather than share them straight away. One thing that I think is worth mentioning, and this does come through on the raw files as well, is the greens in the images. I find that the greens come through super saturated, and I found this on my M240 as well. Now, if you really like that bright, vibrant green look, then you'll absolutely love this. But for me, the greens just come through way too saturated. It's really easy to fix in post, but again, kind of points to the fact that I'm not sure I've ever really used the JPEGs out of this camera. I'm always gonna view it as a raw shooter, or I'm gonna have to come home and edit and dialing back those greens is definitely something that I'm going to find myself doing almost straight away. I have found myself having a really weird issue with this camera. Every time I put my camera in and out of the bag, I somehow often knock the little switch next to the viewfinder, the dial there that changes the diopter kind of magnification, which you use to change if you've got kind of bad eyesight, you can change it so that the viewfinder looks in focus. Now, just putting this in and out of my bag, I somehow seem to knock that all of the time and end up then looking through the viewfinder and it looking really blurry and having to set it back. Now the dial on the back doesn't click or anything. And again, I think with the Q2, they've actually made it so you have to kind of depress this before it will spin. But bizarrely, I just seem to knock that all the time. It might just be me and how I'm putting my camera in and out of the bag, but it's something that I notice quite a lot. So then, what are my closing thoughts on this camera? Now, this is a camera that inspires me to go out and shoot photos. I don't know what it is about it. I think it's a mixture of the premium feel, the 28 mm focal length, and a quite fast full frame camera that just makes me wanna go out and create images. And I think if you have any gear that inspires you to go and create, then you're probably onto something good. Now, for me, the biggest downside with this camera is the lack of weather sealing. It means that I can't use this as like an everyday carry because I can't use it every day, which is probably the most frustrating thing about this camera. I'm really looking forward to shooting more and more images with this camera and it's bound to be featured more and more on this channel. Like I said earlier, I will be doing a direct comparison to the X100V. That video will be coming out very, very shortly. I hope you've really enjoyed this video and if you've got any tips and tricks for me about the Leica Q because it's pretty new to me. I think I've already read one of them is that I need to cover up these mic ports pretty quick as I think dust gets in here pretty quickly and if it gets inside the camera it can cause all sorts of havoc. But if you know anything else that I should know then please let me know down in the comments. And if you've got any questions I'll also get back to you down there too. Thank you for watching guys. If you've enjoyed it please like, please subscribe and I hope to see you in the next one. Cheers.